Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's your boy, Out of Order, and I realized I never made a thumbnail tutorial. I've got all of these tutorials lined up, and yet I've still never even talked about thumbnails. So, hey, we're gonna make a quick little tutorial. So, follow along, and I'm gonna show you how I make my thumbnails and how you can make good thumbnails, too. So, as you guys can see, we're in Photoshop. I got a blank canvas. Now, normally, you want the thumbnail to be the same resolution as your video. So, this is gonna be a 1080p video. So, I do 1920, 1080p. So, I'm gonna make the thumbnail of the video that you're watching watching right now so i got a bunch of images lined up so these are just like images of me like pointing at the camera my idea is that we'll have me pointing at like the photoshop icon and then it'll be like thumbnail tutorial just something cliche all right usually the more cheesy it is the more views it'll get i look pretty beta in these pictures i'm not gonna lie let's go with the little edgy ones so i'm gonna select that right there so i'm gonna drag it into photoshop right here now i did take these pictures on the camera you're watching me on right now so yeah this camera right here i did take those pictures so if you import it into Photoshop with the camera picture is going to bring us up right here, which is camera raw. Now, hold on. Let me slow down a little bit, actually. Now, the way I make my thumbnails is I like to have text on one side and then a subject on the other side. So usually I'll have like text that'll say like what the video is about. And then on the other side of the screen, it'll have like a picture of either me or if I'm playing a video game, it'll have a picture of like a video game character or just some subject, something that has like in the foreground. So mid ground would be like the text of what the video is about. Foreground would be like the subject of the video and then background would be like obviously a background so let's say you're working with a jpeg let's say you got a picture of you or you got a video game character or just some photo you want to be on the foreground like a little subject highlighted what i usually do is import it right here and then i go to filter and then i go to camera raw filter underneath filter and as you can see we got all these cool settings right here you can also press Control shift a which will open this up right away so that's the keyboard shortcut to bring this up so for starter i'm gonna lower down the highlights just a little bit maybe increase the shadow and i'm gonna be masking the background out as well so we don't have to worry about how that looks. We just want to focus on me right here. I feel like there's a little bit too much green on here. So we're going to maybe bring out a little bit more purples. Maybe bring it a little bit more bluer. Mess around with the temperature. You can also do auto, but most of the time it'll screw it up. So yeah, we don't really want to do that. And if we go down here to color mixer, as you can see, my face looks kind of weird. So we can like adjust the hues of each color. Maybe desaturate the reds a little bit. I look like I'm blushing. I don't know why. So as you can see, that looks a lot better. We can also go to detail and try maybe smooth smoothing it out, maybe adding some noise reduction, a little bit more sharpen, and boom, I think that looks pretty good, so we're gonna press OK. So the next thing we're gonna do after we imported the subject, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go over to the top, select and mask. You can also use Alt Control R. Now this is a really, really useful feature that I don't really see a lot of people talking about. It's essentially just like key light almost, like you can kind of just mask out. So most people will just grab their brush tool and then just start, you know, erasing around the edges. But if you go to select and mask, as you guys can see, it's selecting a lot better than what we could do by ourselves so so we're just going to want to select the area we want to keep on the thumbnail and if you select something like this just hold alt to erase it like that so yeah alt is pretty much what you don't want selected why is my windows making a bunch of sounds all right ignoring windows as you can see we're going to go up here just a little bit maybe add a little bit of the hat on and we're going to keep going here as you can see that looks pretty good i think we did a good job so if we press okay as you can see boom we got me masked out perfect now as you can see it's not entirely perfect because there's still a little bit of weird stuff happening on my hat so if we select the mask right here and then select the color black we can pretty much just use it as an eraser tool so this is basically affecting the mask so when we have black selected it's going to be erasing it but if we have white, we can add stuff back, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to use the soft brush on the hand as well, because it looks like it got a little bit, did some funky stuff here, which we don't want. And as you can see, I think we did a pretty good job masking me out. Now, the way YouTube displays thumbnails is YouTube will have like a little timestamp here of how long the video is. So because of that reason, I always try and have this spot of the thumbnail be empty and blank. Just something simple, all right? Maybe a solid background, just, just something that's not important. You know, you don't want any important text on this side of the thumbnail, because the timestamp's just going to be blocking it. So I feel like if we put me there, that's a pretty good spot. As you can see, it's not going to interfere with anything too important. The next thing I'm going to do is I like to add text. So I'm going to click over here with the text tool and I'm just going to type in thumbnail. You, of course, will type in whatever you want here. And let's just find a cool font to select. All right, this is usually my go-to font. I usually always use the next font. I feel like it's pretty bold. It looks pretty nice. So I'm going to move this up here just a little bit. And then I'm also going to make another text layer and we're going to call this one tutorial. I'm going to select a different font for this one as well. All right, that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to drag this up over here. Now, the way I like to do my thumbnails is a little bit different. What I usually do is I get these two together and then I'll select both of them. And then I'm probably just going to angle it just a little bit like that. So this is the fun part. This is how I like making my thumbnail. So I'm going to select the top layer, which is thumbnail. We're going to click on the thumbnail layer over here. 
right click on it, go up to the top, click on blending options. And we're going to get a lot of features over here. So to start things off, we're going to click on the gradient and then we're just going to make a simple gradient or you can use some of these presets right here. Actually, this gradient looks pretty good. So we're going to keep this and then I'm going to bring this over here. I usually try and have the lighter color on top. So we're going to angle it just a little bit. So you can also mess with the scale too, but I feel like this looks pretty good. So we're just going to put it like this. And then the next thing I like to do is I like to add a drop shadow. But the way I do my drop shadow is I kind of use this to make it look 3D. So we're going to make sure the size is zero. We're going to move the distance just a little bit. And then we're going to move the angle around to where it looks something like that maybe. And then the blend mode, we're going to change the color of it. Let's just select the pink over here. And then we're going to make it maybe a slight darker pink. Maybe like that will look cool. So now that we got the text with the gradient and we got the little drop shadow making it 3D, the next thing I like to do is right click on the layer, click on rasterize layer style. So that's basically just going to convert it into a normal layer. And we're going to go back into blending options. And now we can add an inner shadow, which as you can see is going to affect the drop shadow and the text. So we're going to enable the inner shadow and then we're going to increase the size a little bit. Up top over here, we're going to make it white. And then if we change the layer style to one of these over here, so we could do linear dodge, we could do color dodge, it's going to make it kind of glow a little bit and to make it a little bit easier to read. So we're just going to do a slight little glow over here. I'm going to adjust the distance a little bit and have it angled to come more from the back. And then we're going to enable a stroke, which is essentially an outline. Now for the stroke, I usually make it black and then I'll have like another stroke outside of it that'll be white. So we're going to make it black. We're going to add a second stroke by clicking on that plus plus icon and then we're going to select the new stroke and we're going to make this one white. Now you can't really see what the stroke looks like so let's just grab our brush tool just to see. So that's what it looks like. That's a bit too much for my liking. So we're going to increase it down just a little bit like that. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for the bottom text. So I'm going to right click on the bottom text, go back to blending options. Then we're going to enable a gradient again. Now I usually like to make these different colors. I feel like that just looks a little bit more appealing. Let's try maybe a blue text. That looks kind of nice. And then let's reverse it so we have the lighter part on top so a little bit like that we're gonna add another drop shadow we're gonna make this one maybe a dark blue like that okay let's right click rasterize the text as well the layer style go back into blending options and then we're going to enable the glow. So that looks pretty good like that. And then we're going to add the strokes back on it again. And boom, as you can see, we got some nice text looking pretty good. All right, guys. So the next thing we're going to do and probably the most important part besides like adding the subject and the text is the background, of course. So I literally just searched on Google neon sunset and uh, this image came up right here. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm just going to go back into Photoshop. Oh, let's just paste it in here. And as you can see, we got the background. Now, if we press control T, we can resize this. So, you know, let's just drag it over here make it fit more on screen Ooh, that actually looks really good already so let's try and have it like that and that looks pretty good surprisingly now some of you guys might think it's a little bit too dark and if it's too dark or too bright usually i just go on curves and then i'll just mess around with this a little bit i don't like having too dark thumbnails unless the thumbnail's like trying to be spooky but i feel like a bright thumbnail like this should like be a little bit brighter maybe just like that okay the next thing i also like to do is let's go back into our blending options on the text right here I'm also going to add just a normal drop shadow this time. So we're just going to add it like this maybe. And you could make it colorized as well if you want. I usually kind of go with the same color, just a little bit darker like that maybe. And then if you change the spread, you can make it thicker if you want. So let's just do something like that maybe. Let's go on to the other thumbnail. Add another drop shadow on here. Increase the size. Increase the spread a little bit. Just so the text is even easier to read. Now you notice that I'm not even composited that well on here at all. So we're going to right click on me. Go into blending options. And we're also going to do some more blending modes on me as well. So usually I like to have an inner shadow on me as well, just so I stand out. I usually will change the color too. So like if I got a like a pink background, I kind of want to go with like a slight pink glow or like a blue glow, just something kind of different. I feel like maybe a slight pink will look all right. So let's just do it like this. Then we're going to add a stroke on here as well. Now the strokes on images tends to look a little wonky. So we're going to zoom back on here as well with our brush tool. And then with the brush tool selected, we're just going to kind of just erase the parts of the stroke that came out wonky. So as you can see, it looks a lot better just doing a little bit of erasing on these edges. We could also erase more up here too. I kind of missed a spot. And then for the subject, which is me, for example, I usually like to add an outer glow. So we're going to add another outer glow here. We're going to change the color make it something a little more appealing. And next, we're going to change the blending mode. I usually like using one of these settings. These over here will darken the image and then these ones right here will brighten it. So let's just see what we can get. That looks kind of cool. So as you can see, linear dodge kind of looks cool. So we're just going to select that. Lower 
the opacity a little bit. And then I'm also going to add a drop shadow too. We're going to make the drop shadow a little bit smaller. So something like that, just to give it a little bit more depth. I'm also going to add a picture of the Photoshop logo off in this corner over here. So you guys have an idea of what we're going to be using in this video. So boom, slap that on over there. And I'm going to do the same thing I did for the text, which is basically just add a drop shadow. <laughs> All right, as you guys can see, it looks pretty good so far. Just slap it on there. Maybe add an outer glow and another drop shadow on it as well. Something like this will look cool. Maybe make a different color, make it shine blue. And now here's the fun part, all right? This is what I feel like makes your thumbnail really stand out and look just a little bit more appealing is we're gonna add some glows on here. So I'm gonna select the brush tool. We're gonna make a new layer. So go over here, click this button down here to make a layer. And then once you have your new layer created, we're gonna go back to the brush tool. We're gonna use a soft brush and then holding alt on your keyboard will allow you to select the color. So we're just gonna kind of write the text over here. So I'm gonna do it like the first half will be the first color like this. And we're going to select the bottom color. And then we're just going to go like this, maybe. We're just going to essentially rewrite the word. It doesn't have to be perfect. As a matter of fact, it looks better if it's a little sloppier. This one right here, we could just use the same color. So we're going to slap this over here. Write out the word over here on the new layer. And then I also want to do the little Photoshop logo as well. So we'll select there by pressing Alt. Maybe add some more glows on me. Maybe add a little bit more over here, too. A little bit up there, a little bit over there. Okay, so this is what it looks like with just the glows. As you can see, it looks pretty bad, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the layer again, go to the top, go to blur. We're gonna add a Gaussian blur. And now with the Gaussian blur, we just wanna kind of increase it. Maybe not too much to where you can't see it, but you wanna increase it to where it looks like a cool glow. So usually I'll do like a value like 75 or, or anywhere between 50 and 75 usually looks good. So for this one, let's just do 66. And then once we do 66, now as you can see, we're gonna change the blend blending mode again. This blending mode doesn't have to be perfect. Like honestly, a lot of these look good. So really go with whatever you like going for. I'm going to use vivid light and then I'm also going to combine it by pressing control J. So once you do control J, it's going to duplicate the layer and we're going to use another one like maybe screen or lighten. So this is without any glow. And then this is with the glow. You can of course lower the opacities on these if they're too strong. So I'm gonna do that just right here. So this is without it, this is with it, and we're pretty much almost done. The last thing I like doing, and this is probably the most important thing, it's essentially adding a filter on top, but it's not necessarily a filter, is I like to just go on Google and then just search up the word light leak. And if you go on light leak, you'll see a bunch of random light leaks, and you just essentially wanna find one to overlay your whole image with. So let's find some that are high quality. All right, so this one right here looks like a good pick. Let's see this one. I think this one will work. So we're going to copy the image. We're going to go back over here and we're going to paste it on here and we're going to move it to the top. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit pixelated. So we're just going to add a slight Gaussian blur on here as well. Not too strong because I kind of want to keep the detail up there, but just enough to where you can't really see the noise. And now once you have the light leak on top, the next step will be to just blend it on. So we can find a new blending overlay. Ooh, that looks perfect. Actually, this one looks pretty good. Now you'll notice it's a bit too strong on the text and it's going to make it harder to read. So I'm going to go back to the eraser tool by clicking the eraser tool. We need the brush size. We're going to increase it a little bit. We're going to make sure we use a soft brush. We're also going to lower the opacity of the eraser because we still want some of the glow on here. So as you can see, we're just going to kind of go around the areas we want to keep. You know, we're losing a lot of detail in the hand, losing some detail in the Photoshop logo. And as you can see, we're pretty much done. I feel like this is a perfect thumbnail. I really do like how this came out. Now, if you want to be even ballsier, if you want to go crazy, you can add even a second or a third light leak. I've done, I think I've done some thumbnails that have like five light leaks on them. If you're having trouble finding light leaks, another thing I like to search up is particles. So we could just type in purple particles and then that'll usually also bring pretty good results. You can also add nebula too. Nebula is a good word. So we just Google search nebula. We could find something like this. So this one right here would be perfect. We just copy the image, go into Photoshop, paste it, and then we just blur it like crazy. And as you can see, we pretty much just generated a light leak. <laughs> so we're going to resize it over the whole thing and then we're going to find a new blending mode we like. So as you can see, for this one, I'm going to use hard light. We're just going to lower the opacity a ton. And then we're going to go back into our eraser tool. And then we're going to use an eraser, except we're going to make the opacity 100 because we, we really don't want to have this much. And as you can see, it added just a subtle, nice vignetting. So this is what it looks like without it. And this is what it looks like with it. And the last thing we're going to do is another adjustment layer. So to make an adjustment layer, we go here to click this weird yin and yang looking icon. We're going to click on this, put it on top, make sure it's up there. And then we're just going to mess around with some curves. We might want to darken it a little bit here. And then we also want to 
to brighten it a little bit more. Just add a little bit of contrast. We'll also add maybe a little bit of vibrance. So we'll increase the vibrance a little bit. Maybe the saturation as well. And if you guys are wondering what the difference between vibrance and saturation is, vibrance is actually only going to increase the saturation of desaturated parts. So if it's more close to being monochrome or black and white, it's going to increase the saturation on it more. Saturation just increases the saturation across everything. So yeah, I feel like we're pretty much done. Now this is just what I like to do. So my aesthetic with thumbnails is once I'm finished with the thumbnail, I'll select every layer. I'm going to press control J on my keyboard. So it's going to duplicate every layer and then I'm going to merge it. So as you can see, we got the whole thumbnail on one single layer. Now what I do with this layer is I'm going to go to the top, go to adjustments, brightness, and contrast, and I'm just going to increase the brightness a ton. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go select our little brush tool, and then we're just going to go here, and we're just going to mask out a little glowy border. You can also do this with blending modes, like you could just right click on it, use inner shadow, but personally, I think just doing it this way looks a lot better. I feel like inner shadow just doesn't look as good as doing it manually. So this is what it looks like without it. And this is what it looks like with it. And there you guys have it. That's how I make my thumbnails. I can't believe it's been like, I don't even know how long. I've been making tutorials for years now and I never made a thumbnail tutorial. But nevertheless, it's here, guys. This was actually a really fun tutorial to make. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. I make videos on editing and all sorts of other cool stuff. And hey, man, I've been working on some crazy videos. So we're going to be dropping some bangers soon. But as always, guys, my social media links are in the description down below, as well as my editing pack if you want to buy my presets, project files, and other cool stuff. Be sure to check that out. Discord server is also down below as well. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next video, boys. Peace out, gamers.